So ordinarily uh, on the weekend, I think a, a hobby of most people is watching sports games. So maybe they've kind of changed somewhat recently. Uh, I was watching a game, oh, two minutes of a game recently, that um, had artificial crowd sounds added. Because otherwise, with like a premiership game, with no one in the stadium, all you hear is dum, give us the ball, give us the ball, dum. I'll pass back, dum, dum. and you don't hear any crowd. There's no, there's no atmosphere, like right. So they add this. Yeah, ooh, yeah. It's so fake, but it actually does make the game a bit better to watch. Strangely enough, because if you're just watching and all you hear is dum, 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 dum. it's just yeah. There's no atmosphere. But I think the reason we like those things, the reason we like games, whether it be hurling football, whatever it is, um. It's the, the, the drama, the excitement, the, you know, like being within one point of the lead and then getting a goal two points ahead and just hold on to that lead to the last minute. And then it's like, it's a foul. And will the ref call it? Did he see it? And uh, all the, the whole drama and the, 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 like, it's just, it's really, it's exciting. It's exciting, right? And then, um, then of course, you know, for like Ireland playing rugby against the All Blacks or something, you know, can we just hold on? Can we just get that last try? Can we just hold on to the lead against these monsters of men? And, uh, you know, it's just, it's, 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 it's really, really exciting. But what, what everyone knows in sport, what's part and parcel of the game, is that going out there on a pitch, there's a chance you might lose. And no matter how good you are, at some stage, you're going to lose some games. No one has a flawless track record. Like, Eventually, you're going to lose. And that's, that's just part of it. Losing is very much an option out on the sports field. I was looking at uh, the political ratings of, of our major political parties here in Ireland just this morning, just had a quick look, because I remember seeing this before, that uh, if a political party in Ireland is doing well, if they're very popular, they're rating will be in or around 35%. So if you're popular, if you're doing really well, about 65% of people in Ireland don't like you. <laughs> or don't agree with you anyway, right? 65% disagree with you, and you're, that's, that's as good as it gets. That's as popular as you will be. Like no political party, none ever gets to like 90 or 100%. It's, it's impossible, you know? So about 35%, 38% maybe, uh, is do, that's doing exceptionally well, which means that, that like, during your political career, most of the people in Ireland disagree with you. And yet, they do it anyway. They get on with the job, even though in many places they'll be considered a failure or unpopular or whatever it may be, and they get on with it. When we think of the most important things, not just sport or politics, but the most important things, there is a chance that we will fail, right? There's a chance when we get married that you could actually be a rubbish father. That's actually a chance. You know, that's, it sounds a bit harsh, but there you go. Uh, a, I mean, we know from real life and real experiences, there is a chance that people can actually mess up being a father or they can mess up being a mother. People can mess up being a priest. This can actually happen. Right, this, is, this is called real life, where we get the chance to do something good and we can actually fail. Failure is actually an option. Remember, it's an expression I heard from a couple of people, younger people uh, here in Holy Family a couple of years ago. I'm not sure if I can say it word for word. I'll paraphrase it. But um, the expression is more or less, oh, I'm useless at life. Now, it's a really dramatic expression, obviously, because I don't think anyone is useless at life. But uh, just the idea being that you know, I mess everything up. This is actually a chance, though, that we can mess up the most important things. That we can mess up what really, really matters. And I think now of like certain family situations that I'd be aware of, things that I've maybe mentioned before. Uh, but like this one particular guy who I know who's married to a stellar wife. She is incredible. She's so loving and serving and prayerful. She's a saint. And uh, when he comes home from work, he just complains about her cooking. And, eh, I don't know if I like it. Well, I'm not sure if I'm in the mood for a pasta today. And she's after spending the whole day preparing it. Like, and uh, then, you know, I was talking to him about food. OK, it's obvious it's not in Ireland. They're, they're an Italian family. Um, and uh, he said, yeah, yeah, but she's, she's not a great cook in her presence. She's there like a slaving over the oven. Uh, yeah, she's, she doesn't really know how to make a lasagna. She's not great. Like, 
And I just thought, you, you absolute person in need of prayer, you know? <laughs> um, like, do you know what I mean? Like, she's actually serving you, and you're just throwing it back in her face, you know? And then, you know, other situations in, in that particular family like that, like, you just need to man up, you know, rec recognize the, the, the gift, the gift of your family, the gift of your kids, the gift of your wife. But no, we can actually mess it up. We can actually get this wrong. And that's what our gospel is about here. When we're talking about Jerusalem, the city of Jerusalem, Jesus sheds tears over it. If you in your turn had only understood on this day the message of peace, what is that? Like The message that, you see, where, where is peace going to come from? Jesus is the Messiah they were waiting for. Jesus has come to liberate them, but not liberate them from Roman oppression, but liberate them from sin, liberate them from this burden that they could simply never undo of their own accord. They can't save themselves. So the Messiah they're waiting for is Jerusalem, but he knows they will reject him. But, and this is the, the unpopular bit that we absolutely have to say. There are consequences. Do you know what I mean? You can actually get this wrong and miss the most important thing, which as we've said a million times here, is getting to heaven. We can actually get that wrong. We can actually miss. We can actually fail. In being saved, we can actually fail. So we're, again, if there's any uh, like Protestants watching this, um, they would be of the interpretation that it, once we're baptized, we're saved, and that's it. We're baptized, then yes, absolutely, uh, all sin of original sin is washed away, and if we die in that moment, we will be saved. Yes, the problem is, after being baptized, we can still sin, and we can still say, I've received this grace of baptism, but I'm not really interested in living according to what you ask me to do. So it's not those who say, Lord, Lord, went to the gates of heaven, but those who do the will of my Father. So we can actually fall short of this we can actually lose heaven. It's, it's a startling reality. It really is. Especially the way most of us have been, have been brought up in our faith where salvation is presumed. Where all you have to do to get to heaven is just maybe, maybe at best, not kill anyone. And then you have to die. And that's kind of it. That's it. You're, you're in heaven. And it's such a dangerously naive view of how salvation works. I mean, Jesus says here, so he's talking about Jerusalem, this heavenly city, but again, Jesus isn't worried about cities. It's not buildings and fortifications that are important. The church is the new and heavenly Jerusalem, or you can, we can also say you and I are, are Jerusalem, this city in which God wishes to dwell. That's you and I. So, a time is coming when your enemies will raise fortifications all around you. They will encircle you and hem you in on every side. Now again, historically, this happened when Jerusalem was attacked, raised the ground, and the temple was also destroyed in the year 70 by the Romans. But uh, you can read scripture in multiple ways. It doesn't have to be solely historically. So they will dash you, and that, that doesn't mean run at hasty pace. That means scourge you, whip you, right? They will dash you, slash you, and the children inside your walls to the ground. They will not leave one stone standing on another within you, and all because you did not recognize your opportunity when God offered it. That's, that's being said to you and I today. We have an opportunity. We have an opportunity to, I decide what I do with the next 12 hours of my day. That's my call, what I do with my free time, what I watch on TV, what words come out of my mouth are chosen by me. My intentions and motivations, I may have somewhat instinctual intentions and motivations that I have to overcome, but I have to choose to overcome them. If it's for vain glory, if it's uh, motivated by lust, if it's motivated by pride, if it's motivated by revenge, whatever it may be, that feeling may be there. I can't control my feelings, but I can control my actions. I can control what I do with those feelings. And this is the opportunity presented to us. And we can, we can get this wrong. We can fall short of the mark. This isn't a threat. This is just reality. But it's, say this is a reality in every other field of life as well. We can get things wrong. We can fail exams, sport, politically, 
academically, whatever it is, we can fail. But we can also fail in the most important thing, which is salvation, entering heaven. Because while the grace is offered to us, we must work with it. So do we. Do we. Over the next couple of days, I think it would be good to kind of start uh, we're going to do a small little series on essentials. When I was a wee bit younger, um, people my vintage will remember uh, the phenomenon known as the cassette, right? T otherwise known as the tape, right? And tapes, I used to have, I used to always make essential collections for my dance songs to play in the car. So like, I think I had about six essential tapes by the, by the end of it anyway, which had all of the must, must know tunes. Uh, so we're going to do a little essential collection over the next couple of days, maybe finishing on Sunday probably, of like the essentials of our faith. What are the essentials that we must get together so that this doesn't happen, uh, that, that, that we don't fall short of the mark? Failing is a possibility. Losing heaven is, is a possibility. I'm not saying a probability, but it's a possibility. So what are the essentials to have in place to stop that happening? Over the next couple of days, we'll, we'll look into it and try and refine it down. Because at times, there's so much. Like you've got, you know, you've got rosary and divine mercy, and you've got pilgrimages, and you've got like consecration to Our Lady, and you've got sacraments, and you've got sacramentals, and uh, divine will, and everything is just like, what, what am I supposed to do? What, what's the, and it's kind of everything and nothing. And look, calm it all down. <laughs> right. Okay, what do you have to do? What are the essentials that we have to have together in order to kind of plot our way to respond to this grace? And be heaven bound what must we do so we look into that over the next couple of days and try and simplify it and distill it and refine it so that we can hear those beautiful words of the lord well done my good and faithful servant come and enjoy the place prepared for you from all time amen